copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 87. Be on the lookout for suspicious Chinese following a narcotic raid in Chinatown. Pick up any suspicious characters and hold for questioning. That's all. Rolls and questions. Invited Mr. George A. Zambini, petroleum engineer and member of the Society of Automotive Engineers, to tell you tonight why you save money by using Rio Grande cracked gasoline in your car. Mr. Zambini. All automobiles built during the last five years have high compression, high speed engines, and ordinary gasoline won't work efficiently in these new motors. Motorists who buy cut-price, uncracked gasoline think they are saving money, but they are wrong. Your motor can use only part of the power in each drop of uncracked gasoline. The unburned portion either goes to waste or turns into damaging carbon or oozes down your cylinder walls to dilute crankcase oil. Doesn't this dilution do any serious damage, Mr. Zambini? I should say it does. If you put the finest oil into a motor and then run it with this cut price, uncracked gasoline for only a few hundred miles, your oil is so diluted it is useless for lubrication. Then you lose power. Carbon begins to choke your motor. Your engine has no protection from friction and wear. What's your recommendation, Mr. Zambini? Every car built since 1930 should use nothing but cracked gasoline. High compression, high speed motors operate at full efficiency only on cracked gasoline. Cracking ensures that gasoline burns quickly, completely, leaving no unburned parts to carbonize or dilute oil. What do you think of the Rio Grande patented cracking process, Mr. Zambini? Rio Grande has unquestionably the finest cracking plant in America. I consider your cracking process the very latest and best development in petroleum refining. Then you know why so many leading western cities that make careful tests of the gasoline they specify for their emergency vehicles, police cars, and fire engines use Rio Grande cracked gasoline more than any other brand. And now we are pleased to present Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. Tonight we bring you a story of the operations of the narcotic squad in their never-ending battle against the drug traffic. This type of police work is one of the most exacting which we perform. Narcotic peddlers are wily, and the operators who employ them, fortified with the power of the underworld, are exceedingly difficult men to capture. Even though we do make an arrest of a peddler or mule, as he is known to the underworld, this rarely brings us to the main source of supply. These mules are well trained and willing to take their punishment for favors or considerations promised to them after they have served their time. It is this branch of police work which involves, very often, the storybook properties of disguises and false mustaches. In order to obtain the information necessary to eliminate a source of narcotic supply, our officers must look like dope users, must dress in rough clothes, and mingle with the underworld. This type of work calls for the utmost bravery. If the disguised officer is suspected, some addict, his mind fired with dope, may decide to exact vengeance on the spot. Our narcotic men are handpicked for their bravery their intelligence, and their comprehensive knowledge of criminology and criminal psychology. They constitute a body of peace officers of whom the citizens and taxpayers may well be proud. I would like to call to the attention of everyone within the sound of my voice that although the lawbreakers in this story are Chinese, cases of crime among our Oriental citizens are very rare 
and they constitute one of the most law-abiding groups within our jurisdiction. Wang Yik. Wang Yik. Every time you guys knock over a mule, we find he's selling that junk for Wang Yik. Sigurd. Yes, sir. Go out and get this Wang Yik. I'm going to put a stop to this dope ring and know the reason why. It won't do any good to bring in Wong Yi. Why not? He's too smart. He lets these mules take their app for him. Old men like that one we just questioned. Wong Yi knows they'll appeal to the sympathy of the jury and get off with light sentences. Mm, that's beside the point. I want Wong Yi. Go get him. Very well. <laughs> cannot understand, gentlemen, why you should desire my highly unimportant presence. Look here, Wong Yink. We'll dispense with the formalities. You're peddling dope and we know you are. Indeed? Then your superior mentalities know of a fact of which this unworthy person is still kept in ignorance. Ah, baloney. If there is any doubt in your highly estimable mind, I shall be glad to offer you any assistance. You bet you will. What did you find at his house, Chickwood? Just what I expected. Nothing. Did you search the place? Thoroughly. Well, maybe he's got some on him. No, I've taken him down. He hasn't got a thing. Uh, the honorable officer appears vexed. If I can help in any way. Look here, Wong Yank. We've arrested three dope peddlers in the past two weeks. And they all admit they work for you. Indeed? Yes, indeed. Now we want to know where your supply is. It is unfortunate. But my humble brain finds it impossible to understand your words of wisdom. You're in a tight spot, Wang Yank. This in no way unusual person is still, for all his shortcomings, fully aware of his legal rights. I am in no spot whatsoever. I enter this place a free man, and I leave it in the same way. But what are you in? It is highly unfortunate that certain benighted individuals choose to defame the good name of Wang Yik. Still, my conscience knows that Wang Yik, a respectable, though in no means extraordinary merchant who abides the law in all respects, has done no wrong. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Come back right here. Come back right here. Good work. Bring that man back here. Take it easy, Captain. You can't make him stay here, and you know it. And what's more, he knows it, too. Yeah, but we know the man's peddling dope. What of it? We can't prove it. You don't understand these Orientals the way I do. If you'll pardon me saying so, you're handling this thing all wrong. Hmm. Well, I guess I didn't put in ten years in a precinct station for nothing. I guess I know how to question suspects. Well, maybe you do. But handling narcotic cases is a completely different thing. Well, how would you do it? Well, I'd work the same way the Oriental does. What do you mean? I'd take my time. I'd have infinite patience. Well, why don't you do it, then? If you let me do this my own way, I will. <laughs> do it any way you like, but get the stuff on that arrogant Chinaman. Very well. But I may be a year doing it. Okay, okay. Take all the time you like, but hurry up. <laughs> Wanted to see me, Captain? Yeah, Madge, I'm looking for some information. What do you want to know? Well, I've just heard that Wong Yank's running a wide open joint down in Chinatown. You just heard it say, Cap, that's old stuff. Everybody along the stem knows it. Where is the spot? I don't know. I've never been able to find out. Why not? What good are you to me if you can't give me information like that? Cool off, big boy. I ain't your police department. What you got all them dicks in the other room for? Well, Chitwood's been working on that guy Wong Ying for months. But he don't get no results. Oh, no? Well, let me tell you. If Eddie Chitwood's on the case, he'll get him. I know that boy. But he better get busy. What do you mean? Well... There's a lot of talk started going around town. What kind of talk? Why, well, don't know as I ought to tell you. I don't want to get any of your boys in trouble. Well, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Well, it don't sound so good for you coppers. Oh, uh, what don't sound so good? Come on, come on, let's have it. They're saying around town that the cops know where Wan Ying joined is, and they're giving it protection. What? Sure, everybody says so. They say the narcotic squad's overlooking the joint. Well, that's such a good. I'm going to handle this thing my own way. Gee, I... 
I hope you won't tell the boys on the squad that I put you wise. You, you know how it is. I just thought it'd be worth your while to know about it, but I don't want to cut into the boys' sugar. Still, at the same time... Don't I'm... worry, Mad. You'll be taken care of. Nobody will know where I got the lowdown. Thanks, Captain. I need a person like you, Madge. I won't forget it. Okay. Anything for me now? No, except go out and try to find out where that joint is. Okay, I'll do my best. So long, Cap. So long, Madge. Send Kidwood in here. Sit down, Kidwood. I understand that Wong Ying's running a smoke joint. That's right. Oh, you knew about it. Yes. Maybe there's some truth in this story, then. What story? That the narcotic squad is receiving payoff in return for immunity. What? The story's all over town. <laughs> well, score one for Wong Yik. What do you mean? What's so funny? You can't bring a Chinaman in here and try to browbeat him the way you did Wong Yik. This is his way of getting even. Do you realize what this means? Sure I do. It's well political material. All the opposition needs is to open up a smoke joint for a night, take some pictures in it, preferably with stooges in the pictures, dressed as coppers, run them in the papers, and the election's lost. That's right. So we've got to do something about it. Now, I'm doing everything I can. I've been shadowing Wong Yip for three weeks. He's too smart. He shakes me every time. Yes, Lord. Is there uh, any truth in this story? Now, listen. If there's any doubt in your mind, you can go get Wong Yip yourself. I know the boys in my squad, and there isn't any of them taking hush money. Oh, now, now, there's no need to get sore about it. Well, I am sore about it. If you hadn't bungled this investigation in the first place, we wouldn't be in a jam like this. Uh, this is no time to argue about past mistakes. No, but you expect me to pull your chestnuts out of the fire? No, it isn't that shit. Boy. Yes, it is that. Okay, I'll get Wong here for you. I'll save your face. But I hope the chief gets wise and puts you back in the six pounding pavements when the smoke clears away. <laughs> Storybook sleuthing. Yeah, but what's in the can you got there? White paint. White paint? What for? We've got to whitewash the boss. Hey, what are you talking about? I'll explain it all on the way out. Wong Yik sore about the way the boss handled him. So he's fixing to frame the police department, and we've got to stop it. Come on. Where are we going? Out to Wong Yik's house. Tell me what's the big idea. Sure. Simple. I lashed the can of white paint under the car. Then I knocked a hole in it with a knife stick. Yeah, but what for? So it'll drip out. Now all we got to do is keep our eye on Wong Yik's house. When he drives away, we let him get a head start, and we still can follow it. See? <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Chitwood. This trail's as easy to follow as a road map. Sure it is. And you see where it's leading us? Sure, right into Chinatown. Yeah. Every time we've shot at Wong Yik before, he's led us all over Los Angeles County and then back to his house. Ah, that guy's smart. Yeah. Dave, tell me this. What would you have done if he hadn't come out right away? What do you mean? Well, I mean, suppose that white paint had had time to make a puddle under the car. Then we'd have been out of luck. Where the trail ends. There's Wong Yik's car parked across the street. Uh-huh. Corner of Alameda and Marcus Street. Well, now what's the next step? To get out of Chinatown before we recognize. <laughs> then begins the tedious work of elimination. Chip Wood and Otto Slensky check over the places of business, restaurants and buildings within the block radius of Alameda and Marcus Street. The known establishments are eliminated at once. 
Then careful inquiry is made regarding doubtful spots. So, slowly do the two officers narrow their suspicious localities until finally there remains but one building on a dimly lit side street which cannot be accounted for. One foggy, chill evening in early September, Chitwood and Plunsky, dressed in old clothes, shuffle through Chinatown. Better lurch a little bit, like you had a load aboard. Now, okay. You know, Chitwood, this all seems a little screwy. Now, these buildings are all warehouses. There's nothing going back here at night. Yeah, maybe, but this one spot down here is the only one we can't account for. Now, this is it, isn't it? Number 73? Yeah, that's right. Well, it looks deserted. But the windows have all been broken. Yeah, you never can tell. Well, let's barge in and see what's there. Quiet. Keep moving. There's a Chinaman behind us. Following us? I can't tell. Just keep walking. Sneak a look and see if he's still there. No? Well, he's gone. He's gone? Where the devil do you suppose he disappeared to? That's just what we're going to find out. Yeah, how? See this low building across the street? Yeah? There's a fire escape on the side. We're going up to the roof. Come on. That silk importing warehouse, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. There we are. Now keep down pretty low so you won't be outlined against the sky. See, it's hard to see down there in the street with that glare those lights throw over in Alameda Street. And your eyes will get accustomed to it. Hey, am I seeing things? Or is that another Chinaman just turned the corner? It is. Keep your eye on him now. He's disappeared. Sure he has. Did you see where? No. He went into our vacant building across the street. Well, say, what in the devil? My guess is that Wong Yik smoke sign is in that building. Hey, look, Chitwood. Here comes a couple of white girls. Uh-huh. Now I'm sure of it. As they go into that dark doorway. Say, we better get the boys down here and knock the place over. Uh, not so fast. We're going to do a little checking up first. What do you mean? Oh, well, we'll spend a few nights up here until we find out when the play is the heaviest. That's the time to knock them over. Yeah, but the captain wants action. He may want action, but I want to knock over Wong Yik's supply. We're going to handle this our way, not his. Night after night for weeks, Chipwood keeps a lonely vigil atop the ancient building in old Chinatown, watching the shadowy figure slink down the dark street, disappear into the yawning black entrance of the abandoned building. Finally, one night, Slensky joins him on the way to the steakhouse. What's up, Chitwood? Trying to knock him over tonight? No, but I want to determine where the joint is located in the building. Yeah, we're taking a chance, aren't we? Oh, not much of a chance. This is Tuesday, and I've noticed that on Tuesday nights, the place doesn't get a big play. The last couple of Tuesdays, there's only been oh, three or four smokers come in all night. So, uh, pretty safe. Well, if it's okay with you, it's okay with me. And a boy. Well, here we are. Post clear? Nobody in sight. Fine. Let's go. Got a flashlight? Yeah, right here. That's good. We need two of them. Well, that entry looks deserted enough. Yeah, I wonder where those stairs lead. That's what we're going to find out. Come on. What's the matter? A mouthful of cobwebs. Oh. Hey, nobody's been up these stairs for years, Jim. Huh? Ever hear of machines that spin cobwebs? Well, we'll see what's behind this door. Chitwood, there's a man crouching there. Where? What? Oh, <laughs> you see what he means, Otto? Look, the life-size figure of Buddha. Must have used this floor for a temple at one time. Well, that sure looked like a man in the shadows. Hey, listen. What was that? Huh? A rat. Yeah, look at him go. Half as big as a cat. Well, there's certainly nothing up here. No. I guess the joint is where I suspected it was all along. Oh, where is that? In the basement. Now, right, let's go down there, then. No, not tonight. All I wanted to do was eliminate the rest of the building. Well, we'd better get out of here now. Now, shall I What's the matter? I'm going to the wall. Someone is coming. Just as I thought. He went down the cellar. Do you want to look that over now? No, sir. The most important thing now is to get out of here without being seen. Well, when are you going to make the raid? Sunday night. That's when the joint gets the biggest leg. Men all posted, Otto? Yep. 
Mrs. Beard are on the roof. Sayers, Hathaway, and the state narcotic man are at the corner waiting for our signal. Hoffman and Harrigan have got fire axes with them. Okay. Give them the flash to come in. Now, flash your light up to the boys on the roof. Do they see you? Yeah, they flash back. Fine. How about it, boys? Are you all set? All right, all right. All right. Okay, follow me and be as quiet as you can. Here's the ladder to the cellar. I thought these underground smoke joints had all been cleaned out, said Wood. Yeah, so did we, Hathaway. Most of the labyrinths under Chinatown were closed up ten years ago, but apparently the boys overlooked one. I'll take it easy. This lower rung is wobbly. Well, looks like we go further down. How's that? This passageway here leads on down. Let's go. What the devil? Water. Look, Chitwood. The passage is flooded. Ah, oh, this is a blind. Yeah, looks like a it. blank wall at the other side. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'm going over there and find out. Watch your step. You may go in over your head. Yeah, it's up to my shoulders now. Hey, what's the matter? I just ran into something. Throw your light over here. Uh-huh. What is it? A catwalk. Three inches below the surface. Uh, see if it doesn't extend over to where you're standing, Otto. Yeah, it does. So that's the way they get across. Come on over, boys. I may as well continue to wade. I'm soaking wet anyway. Well, you have to get your feet wet to get to your opium pipe, eh? Oh, it's a couple of wet feet when you can get all geed up on the other side. Or can you? It looks like the wall's solid. I can't see any breaks. Can you? Mm, no. It's solid brick as far as I can tell. I'm afraid this is just a flooded cellar. Hey, look. What? A piece of wire leaning against the wall. Well, nothing so surprising about that. Yeah, but this wire should be rusted down here in this sinking hole. And look, it's all shiny. Why, gosh, you're right, Otto. Now, I wonder what that's for. Now, let's see if it fits any place. Yeah, sure, here's a hole between the bricks. Ah, oh, that's just an old nail hole. Yeah, we'll see. I'll just stick this wire into the hole and try... Moving. Look. We're all swinging back. Right, boy, Otto. Yeah, the wire must have made an electrical contact. Come on, boys. Let's see whether it's snakes or hot spikes we have to get around next. Duck your head. This passage was made for a short time. Hey, look. There's a door at the end. Yeah, this must be the place. All right, Harrigan. All through. Get busy with those fire axes. Hurry up, boys. They're wise in there. She's falling by the sledgehammers on the hinges. Now, let's see. 
Unless it'd be the back of that place along in here, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Just what I thought. What? Smell anything peculiar? Mm, yeah. A little bit of a sweet smell. Opium smoke. Come on. Where are we going? Back to headquarters and pick up the boys. <laughs> Slip down the alley. Give me two minutes in the store, and then start breaking down the alley door. When the noise starts, Otto, you come into the store. If my guess is right, they'll waltz right into our arms. All set? All set. All, All right. right. Okay, here goes. Oh, good evening. You, you may be so lucky by something? Yeah, Charlie, I, I got the pip. Oh, pip? Oh, no, 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 Charlie. I, I got a pain. You give me something good for pain in the stomach, huh? Oh, stomach? Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe so you like a number one herb? Fix you up very good. Okay, I can do it. All right, hold it out. Oh, yeah. I fix you him good. Say, what's this thing in the bottle? Oh, which one? Which place? Back here, in the back of the store. Oh, that the one? Oh, don't go, then... Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it may be so that the very old tiny eel. Oh, very good for headache, yeah. Yeah, it gives me a headache to look at it. You know, Charlie, hey, I had a headache what once for three days. What Boy, happened? what trouble that day Charlie, made. What's the noise? Huh? You what hear noises? Noise? No, I don't hear any noise. Oh, I go see what's making noise. Here we are. Oh, what for you pulling down? I'm a police officer. Pulling down now. Don't worry. Open your hands, you guys. Now, quiet down. Quiet down. Oh, no. Yes, sir. And put these men. Right. I do not think there is any occasion for these honorable friends of mine to be manacled. Why, Well, we're sure glad to see you. Your happiness could not be as great as mine. It is always pleasant to greet an old friend. But I must ask why you dare interrupt so rudely our pleasant conversation in the home of our old friend, Sing Min. You're under arrest, Wong Hick. And why, may I ask? Position of narcotics. Does my superior friend, Captain Chitwood, still suffer under the delusion that I... Oh, pipe down. There. Yes, Captain. What'd you find back there? Hey, this is a plan, Robert. A $3,000 worth, I should say. That's all I want to know. Well, Wong Hick... Uh, still, if my old friend Sing Min has laid by a supply of the comforting puppy to console his advancing years, I do not comprehend why it should be of concern to you, or why it should involve me or my two friends here. Take him down. Right. I warn you, Captain, someday you will go too far. What's that you just found, Otto? A couple of ounces of morphine. <laughs> Looks like you've gone too far already, Wong Yik. I am at a loss. To understand. We've got you where we want you now, Wong Yik. Here's all the proof we need to send you up to the big house. I truly it is written He who caught the dragon must be ever alert, lest his fire breathing consort consume him in her passion. <laughs> and his companions were speedily tried and sentenced to the state penitentiary for the terms prescribed by the law. Thus did Captain Chitwood and his men close the last of the fabled old-time opium dens in Los Angeles. As work advances on the new central terminal, block after block of old Chinatown is rapidly being raised to make way for the railroad yards. No more do the narcotic officers clamber through foul-smelling subcellars to find their quarry. When opium-smoking resorts are discovered nowadays, they are apt to be in hotels and apartment houses in the more fashionable parts of the city. But due to the never-ending vigilance of your police, assisted by state and federal narcotic officers, this vice is slowly but surely approaching complete eradication. Thank you, Chief David. The efficiency of your police department has given Los Angeles the reputation of being one of the best policed cities in the United States. The use of Rio Grande cracked gasoline has contributed greatly to this reputation for efficiency. For many years, all Los Angeles police cars, fire engines, and emergency equipment have been powered by Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Police cars respond to emergency calls in unbelievably short time. City records show that automobile operating costs are lower than ever. Other California cities, Oakland, Berkeley, Fresno, Bakersfield, 
many cities and counties in Arizona, including the capital city, Phoenix, all specify Rio Grande cracked gasoline exclusively for emergency cars. This is the same cracked gasoline your neighborhood Rio Grande service station offers. Try a tank for yourself, and you will see why Rio Grande cracked is specified above any other brand for emergency motors. Broadcast 87. Canceling warrant regarding suspicious Chinese. Suspects are now in custody. That's all. Rolls and clips.